is SSL Family Dad with Simple Suburban Living here with SSL Family Dog, Allie. She always helps out, not quite so much. So today I wanted to actually go through a uh, video um, describing the process to wire a generator into your home. Um, there are a couple different ways to do this. Um, the way that I'm going to go through today is kind of the more... Uh, a little more expensive way, but I think this is the right way to do that, um, to wire a generator into your home circuit breaker, and that's by using a transfer switch. Um, so I'm going to go through the process of kind of the outside part of it here. Um, I do have a review on this particular generator that I did as well. I'll link to that. And um, uh, But you can use any generator that has the, the 220 or 240 volt uh, twist lock outlet on it. Um, so this generator has the uh, 30 amp um, twist lock here and uh, I've got this lovely cord that came with the transfer switch I bought which is a Reliance transfer switch and I'll talk a little bit more about that as well. Um, this is a 7500 uh, watt continuous running power generator. Um, peak is 93 or 9400 watts uh, peak um, peak uh, generator draw or, or electric draw on that. So um, so basically what I have set out here, um, I, I wheel the generator out whenever we run out of power and uh, hook up this uh, 30 amp twist lock 220 volt cord. Um, the other end here is a female end, so you don't get shocked while it's plugged in. And then I've got this uh, little plug that we wired up on the outside of the house. I kind of have it snuck hidden back here. But this basically, let's see if I can look in here, here. There we go. This opens up and there's just a little uh, plug in there. So um, four prong plug that fits this four prong uh, twist lock plug here. So, so all you do is just fire the generator up, plug into the uh, the connector here on the outside, and then we'll go downstairs and actually show you um, the uh, process to get to, to to hook up the transfer switch. If you purchase one, uh, how you kind of go through the I won't go through a, um, in detail the wiring and all that stuff because they have really good instructions that comes with the transfer switch itself. But I'll go through the basics, how it works. And uh, what are some of the advantages of that and some of the drawbacks of this type of a, of a setup. So we'll go ahead and downstairs and check that out. All right, so we're down in the basement here with the uh, breaker panel and uh, taking a look at the transfer switch itself. And this is the kit that I used. It's a Reliance 10 circuit portable generator transfer switch kit. And uh, this thing is just was awesome. Um, very, very easy to install. Um, and uh, it comes with pretty much everything that you need. So a couple things that I needed to get extra, but uh, it came with the, the bulk of everything I needed to get it set up. So um, it comes with this, uh, uh, what we already saw outside here, the actual plug that mounts on the side of the house that you plug the generator into. So it comes with that. It also comes with this cable that you that I showed you outside um, that you hook up to the generator itself, that four pin uh, 30 amp twist lock plug. Um, it comes with this actual transfer switch, which is a 10 circuit transfer switch, which I'll show you here in a minute. It also comes with the electrical whip um, that goes between your, your breaker box and the transfer switch itself. And all the wires are all pre-bundled inside that, which I'll talk about a little further here in a minute as well. Um, it comes with like all the wire nuts you need and everything else. So um, there's really only one piece of wire that I needed to buy with this with this setup to get it to get it hooked up and going. So um, excellent product. I definitely would recommend this uh, for anybody looking to for backup power on their um, hookup right up to their home. So, but uh, here's the unit itself. Um, basically, ten circuits uh, on the transfer switch. And what that means is that um, you're going to correspond each one of these switches to one of your breakers or one of your circuits in your home. Um, and so what you have to do is choose which 10 breakers or which 10 circuits in your panel you want to, to have powered with your backup generator. Um, so in this case, I chose, um, like I've got our furnace here, uh, I've got the well hooked up, um, I've got a few master, the master bedroom plugs and lights, our sump pump, uh, our garage plugs for our deep freezer out there, both of our kitchen circuits that runs our refrigerator and microwave and coffee pots, and we use those outlets up there to charge things and that when the power's out, um, and a few other various uh, circuits around the house. So you just have to choose 10, and you can't have everything powered at the same time, but for backup power, you generally don't need everything powered. So um, 
I actually did hook up our laundry room to this because we have a gas dryer and I was hoping it would be able to run it if for long periods of time we could do laundry. But um, the generator, as I explained in my um, uh, generator review, this Generac generator has a modified sine wave or it's, a, it's not quite the pure sine wave power coming out of the generator and it doesn't run real heavy duty electric motors quite as well. And so I didn't want to run the dryer and stuff like that on for extended periods of time. So I, I'm going to take that circuit off and put something else on. So I would stick with, you know, refrigerators and your well and all the major essentials that you'll need for, um, for backup power. <coughs> um, but the, the kit itself uh, was, a, like I said earlier, extremely easy to install. So every single one of these these switches has a letter associated with it, like A. And there's a, uh, two wires that come through and, and they run through this whip and they come up in the back of the panel and they're labeled with A. Um, all you do is basically pick the circuit, like this is our furnace circuit here, 15 amp circuit. <clears throat> you um, take the black wire out of the, the side of the circuit breaker, you twist tie it with the black wire labeled A. And then you hook up the neutral into the uh, um, neutral to the panel, and all the instructions with this are very very easy. They have diagrams. There's a DVD that comes with it that will literally show you how to install this if you know um, if you've never done it before, like myself. Um, I'm not an electrician uh, by any means. I do a lot of electrical work around the house, but I'm not an electrician. So if you're not comfortable working in, you know, a high a panel, an electric panel, you have to take the cover off and you have to get in there. Obviously, you have to take, you know, shut the, the main power off and, um, you know, use all your uh, standard safety practices when working with electricity. Um, but it's not too hard to do yourself. I would recommend, you know, if you're comfortable doing that, that, that anybody comfortable working in the panel could, could handle this job. So... Um, but so that's all you're doing for each one of these circuits is you just follow the wires and the one labeled F, you pick another, you know, another circuit. So this is A and then this switch on the side is F. Um, and then you just mark them down as you go here. So I've got all my, um, you know, each one that I, that I hooked up all labeled here and which circuit breaker it corresponds to in the panel. Um, you can hook up 15 amp and 20 amp circuits <clears throat> and I've got a few of each that I hooked up here back into focus so um, the four bottom circuits here are for 20 amp uh, breakers which I you know for the kitchen and stuff like that those are all 20 amp and I think my garage was as well um, and then these are all 15 amp now this one here is tied together because this is a uh, whatever you call it double throw it's a 220 volt this goes to our well so this occupies both of these switches and it just comes with this little bar you put across and then you just hook up both C and H to the corresponding well uh, which is a double breaker here so that's the only one I have hooked up that's 220 volts and that was one of the main things that I needed the generator this transfer switch for was so that I could run my furnace and my well and it does both of those just fine so um, so another nice thing about the transfer switch here is it does have these two um, wattage meters at the bottom, which is which is really handy. Um, so basically how this works is this this leg here on this side starts with A and ends with uh, E is one leg or one side of the generator. And this, this uh, side over here starting with F and ending with J is another leg or side of the generator. And you want to try to balance the, the, the power draw on your your generator between both of those so for instance you wouldn't want to put like your furnace and your both of your refrigerators in our case we have two a furnace both the refrigerators and your microwave all on the same side um, those are very very likely may all run at the same time and you're gonna drop you know be drawing more power from one side of the generator over the other so you want to try to figure out what wattage things are just generally um, and when you tie this in, you know, just try to balance the circuits out. So I have two kitchen circuits. I have one on this side, one on this side. And so that way when I'm running anything powerful in the kitchen, any, you know, kitchen utilities and stuff like that, um, it's not going to um, tax one side or the other of the generator too much. So um, so these will actually, <clears throat> when you're on generator power, these will just kind of monitor the, the power usage on each leg of the, of the generator. And that can kind of help you... Um, you know, judge how much power you're using and um, how to balance that. So, so this one's an 8,000, was it, was it 8,000 watts total, I think, but this one only goes up to, yeah, so 3750 on each leg. Um, so the one thing that I still have to redo, the one wire you do have to purchase is the incoming wire, and this is a, 
10 four or 10 gauge four strand wire that goes up and that goes and ties out to that uh, the plug that's on the outside of the house that I showed you earlier. Um, that's a piece of wire you do have to purchase, doesn't come with the kit. And the reason I have it just kind of patched in here right now is because during the power outage when I hooked this up, everybody ran to all the hardware stores and electrical stores to buy all these generator hookup kits and stuff. I got the last one of these kits and they didn't have any of the wire, so I had to patch two pieces together as a temporary solution, but this will be in conduit uh, going up uh, into the ceiling here for obviously the safe safe and correct way to do that. But all in all, uh, you know, this is an excellent product. These, the transfer switch here is not, it's not cheap. You know, this was a little over 300 hours for this, this whole kit. Um, but in my opinion, it's totally worth it. I mean, this is going to be something we're going to use a lot. I mean, we lost power like four times last year for a couple days apiece. And, it, and you know, hopefully we don't lose power that much. But uh, this will come in, come in very handy. So I would highly recommend this. It's a great investment for your home. It's great to have a backup generator and be able to just wheel it out, plug it in, turn it on. Uh, the generator I have runs for about 12 hours at 50% load. So you have to fill it up twice a day and uh, it'll stay running for you. So... Um, definitely a great way to do it. Um, the other way that you can tie in a generator to a breaker panel, uh, the, the not correct way to do this, and that is to use one of your like 30 amp breakers here, and you can actually take the cover off and you can tie the wires right into one of your breakers, and then you have to make sure that the main breaker is turned off, and you can back feed, you know, into your panel that way. Um, I see a lot of people doing that. I see a lot of other videos explaining how to do that. Um, that's fine. It is a lot cheaper if, if you're in a pinch and you need to do something like that. You know, that's that's up to you. Um, that is dangerous. It's it could be dangerous for your generator. It definitely could be dangerous for any of the linemen that are out working on the lines. If you forget to flip this breaker off, it'll backfeed power out to the power lines. Uh, it's also, um, you know, just overall, that's just not really the best way to do it. So um, if you're considering tying your generator into your panel, I would highly recommend using the transfer switch. Um, there are other ways, you know, there are special little brackets that will come up here and lock the, the, the main into the off position before you can backfeed into the breaker. And uh, you'd have to have your breaker at the top here, I think, to get one of those brackets in here. Um, you can look those up on the internet if you're not sure what I'm talking about. But again, that's fine too. But again, this is the, really the way to go. Um, 10 circuits is plenty. And in fact, I really have nine circuits hooked up here because I've got this one, uh, the double, taken up two for the well. Um, but 10 circuits is really, 9 or 10 circuits is really enough for most homes. I mean, this is a 150 amp panel, you know, I've got, I don't even know how many circuits I have in here, a lot, and, uh, you know, 10 of them for backup power was just fine for us. So, um, you know, in closing, again, I highly recommend this, Reliance Transfer Switch, because you can get these anywhere, uh, you can buy them online, I've seen them on Amazon, um, they're definitely at Home Depot, and they're, and they're at Lowe's, you can probably get them at your hardware stores and electrical stores and things like that as well. Um, very easy to install, and highly, highly, highly recommend um, using one of these in your home, so... Hopefully this uh, helped you out. If you have questions, please throw them in the comments. Uh, love to answer any questions that you may have or comments um, on how I could do things differently or better. I'm always looking for ways to improve things. So, um, But please uh, throw comments in there if you have them and like the video if you, if you enjoyed it. And hopefully this will help you out if you're making a decision on how to tie your generator into your home. And uh, I appreciate you taking the time to watch. Have a good one.